from the Lord, for the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Won't you join in with the choir for our opening selection?
trust him. My God, he'll surely, surely bring you out and make your bed. Take a good morning.
God. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Well, we did say make a what kind of noise unto the Lord? Raise your hand for making a joyful noise. Amen. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. Bless the Lord. Ooh. All right. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Psalm 84. Psalm 84, verses 11 and 12. Psalm 84, verses 11 and 12. And I'm so grateful this morning because I could jump up and down and didn't get out of breath. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. Psalm 84, verses 11 and 12. And it reads, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. It's the word of God for the people of God. Be blessed. Um, Deacon Bullock, would you come and do our morning prayer, please? Thank you. Good morning, Third Baptist and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to be happy, glad, and rejoice in it. Thank God for who he is and where he reigns. Let's humble our hearts and look to him, which giveth us all blessings. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, give us this day our daily bread. Father God, before I go any further, I want to ask you for forgiveness of sin. Lord God, cast it as far as the east is from the west, sinking into that chilly Jordan that it might not rise to trouble us no more. Right now, God, we just want to edify you. We want to magnify you. We want to glorify you because you're worthy. You're worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. If we had 10,000 tongues right now, Heavenly Father, all articulating at the same time, it would not be enough. We say hallelujah, Lord God. We say glory, hallelujah, Lord God, because you're worthy. We don't want no rock to cry out in our stead, Heavenly Father. We want to thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord God, we want to thank you for the activities of our limbs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for holy hands to raise. We thank you, Lord God, for feet to walk. Lord God, we thank you for the clothes on our back. Heavenly Father, we thank you for transportation. Father God, we thank you for a roof over our head. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the little things, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to see. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are able to talk. We thank you, Lord God, that we can walk, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross, that we might have a right to the tree of life. We know that he didn't have to do it, but he did, to, lo to ransom lost man back to you. Just for, we say, Lord, we say thank you. We say glory. We say glory, hallelujah. Father God, we pray right now that you will let your train just fill the building. Let it roll and sit down beside someone, Lord God, that don't know you as the pardon of their sin. So in the main, the word come forth, they make say, what can I do to be saved? 
Father God, we pray that thou will bless the one that's sick and shut in. Bless the one that's in the jailhouse, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that they might be locked up, but they are not locked out. Lord God, we pray that anybody that's got blood pressure problems, high or low, Lord God, touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you got all power. You can do anything but fail. Lord God, we thank you for who you are and where you reign. Father God, we pray that I will continue to bless this choir as they come forth to sing the songs of Zion, Lord God. Not them afresh that their tongues, Lord God, will sing like the archangels, Lord God. Filling this place with your Holy Spirit. Bless the one that's on the string instrument, Lord God. Bless the one that's on the bongo, Lord God, on, on the bongo, Heavenly Father. Bless the one that's on the piano, Heavenly Father. Bless our media ministers, Heavenly Father. Bless our worship leader for the day, Heavenly Father. Bless the person that's on the way to give the word, Lord God. For I heard that he might be running a little late, but if he don't show up, we got somebody. Thank you, give you all the glory and all the praise that can bring the word of God that would anoint all of us afresh. So we pray, God, God, for whoever it is to come and stand behind this sacred desk. Let them down in the deepest treasures of your love, your knowledge, your wisdom and understanding. Let their word come forth like a two-edged sword, cutting on one side and healing on the other. We give you glory this morning, Lord. We give you all, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God, because of who you are and where you reign. You have brought us, Lord God, every one of us from a mighty long way. We didn't have to be here, Lord God, but you allowed it. Father God, we want you to bless the one that's suffering loss. Help him through this day. For I had classmates, co-workers, People that I've been knowing all my life <laughs> that has transitioned on, but yet you left me. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, I ask you to bless my wife in a special way. Continue to give her, Lord God, for what she needs that she might glorify you. Because next to you, Lord, she's the love of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, if there's anything that I fail to ask, and you know this congregation here at TBC stands in need of, I pray that I would give it to them. Pour it out like the, the coffee cup that the overflow be more than enough to satisfy us in this day and this time. Because every time we cut on the TV, Lord God, it's, it's violence in this world. Two and three getting killed every day. Lord God, earthquake is taking them away 30,000 at the time. But Lord God, I know that you are still in control. Can't nobody do us like you. So keep us, Lord. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank God. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Yes, it is.
Amen. Won't you give them a big round of applause? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, choir. I will welcome. Do we have visitors today? If so, if you would please stand. Any visitors? Bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Third Baptist, let us greet our visitors. Amen? Amen. Welcome. We, the members of Third Baptist Church, gladly welcome you, our visitors, to our church home. If you are seeking Christ, you will find him here. If you are sorrowing, you will find comfort. If you are troubled in spirit, you will gain the blessings of peace. If you are discouraged, you will rejoice in hope. If you are friendless, you will find companionship and Christian love. That these and all blessings may be your portion. It is our prayer. Amen. Now, Third Baptist, I'm actually do something different today. Uh-uh, y'all, you can get off that early. That easy. Come on, stand. Stand. And turn around. Visitors, wave your hands so they can see in case you're sitting behind folks. There you go. Now reach out and let's give them a big hug and say thank you for coming. And please come again. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Our announcement. We praise God that we have a long weekend to rest. Amen. February is Black History Month and Heart Awareness Month. And that's the reason why many have on red today. Adult Sunday School and Youth Sunday School is held every Sunday morning at 845. Ministry leaders, please continue to coordinate with your ministry. The men's ministry will meet on next Sunday, February 26, immediately following morning worship. Please remember to wear your mask while in the church, and we thank you for complying. Finance, fin finance contribution statements will be distributed in the fellowship hall immediately following service today. Please remember that Tuesday, February 21st, is election day for the congressional vacancy seat created by the transition of Senator Donald McEachin. Reverend Cassandra Bullock, will deliver the word the entire month of March across the street at Unity Baptist Church. And if you don't know where Unity is, it's right over there. Amen. Amen. Services there begin at 11 a.m. On next Sunday, February 26, a light meal will be provided in to-go trays to celebrate Black History Month. Thanks to Reverend Carisha Williams and company, along with the Third Baptist Church Diaconate Ministry. The women will meet next Saturday at 1230 at Old Charlie's for an afternoon of fellowship, food, and fun. Please continue to remain in prayer for all who have, are suffering sickness, loss, or bereavement. We lift up those who have been impacted by shootings and incidents of violence throughout the world. Um, next, we're going to have Miss Dobie for Heart Awareness Month, followed by a moment in black history. Good morning. It is very good and so well blessed to be able to be here today. We're concerned about the month of February, which we usually call it the month of the heart. There's a lot of love and the heart and, you know, a lot of things happen. Just want to give you a few incidents or a few facts about the heart. We are concerned because we have a lot of blood pressure problems. A lot of us don't want, to ha don't want it and we don't want to take our medication. So if we have high blood pressure or low blood pressure, please monitor your blood pressure. Go to your physician as he makes the appointments. Keep those appointments and take your medication. 
not only do we look at the heart for blood pressure, we also look at the heart for heart failure. We also look at congestive heart failure. We look at low blood pressure as well. Low blood pressure can be just as dangerous as high blood pressure. So we're asking that you monitor that. We don't want to, um, we really don't want to take our medications. We want to try and prevent it. Everything there is going to prophylactic medications. So I'm just going to give you a few tips to try to prevent or control your blood pressure without medication. And some of these you already know, and some of you are going to say, I can't do that. The first one is try to lose a few extra pounds. I know that's hard, but try. We need to try to do that. Our lifestyle change can affect our blood pressure, and you'll be surprised at how much that will do it. Exercise regularly. Don't go out and do a marathon right away. Try walking, you know, from the parking lot to the store instead of parking right at the door. You know, I know that's hard too. But try to do a little exercise each day. Eat a healthy diet. Make sure we try to monitor what we eat. We need to cut down on that salt. That sodium will, will cause a lot of problems. And in doing that, we need to read the labels on the cans that we buy food, things. Make sure you read your labels. Try not to eat as much processed food. You know, going to the deli. I know it's quick, but we got to watch that. And try not to add salt to your diet. After it has been prepared, try not to add another half a teaspoon of salt to it. Okay? Limit your alcohol intake. Another thing we need to do is quit smoking. We need to cut down on the smoking. And for me, get a good night's rest. Some of us don't go to bed until 2 or 3 o'clock and we up at 5. Try to get a good night's nice rest. Create a restful space. Sometimes during the day get you a few minutes that where you can sit down and rest a little bit. Watch what you eat and drink. And also limit your naps. If you're taking naps all during the day, you can't get a restful sleep at night. So try to limit your naps. Right now, we've gone through a lot of stress, but we need to try to reduce our stress. Avoid trying to do too much, and I'm talking to me now, okay? Focus on issues that you can control and make plans to try to solve those. If you can't control them, don't put a lot of focus on them. If you need help with them, get some help. It's not bad to ask for help, because help is available, but we don't know you need help until you let us know. Avoid stress triggers. Make time to relax and practice gratitude. Monitor your blood pressure at home and get regular blood pressure checks. A lot of places are doing blood pressure checks. It's no harm to stop five minutes and get a blood pressure check because that's why they say hypertension is the silent killer. It doesn't tell you anything until it has really gotten there. And try to get some support. There are people around who will help you. Uh, we have nurses here at the church and a lot of different places that would monitor your blood pressure. Please try to do that. And we're going to try. It all depends on how many people we have, but we will try to uh, do blood pressures this, today after service in the fellowship hall. Thank you. And thanks for wearing red. It's a reminder for all of us. Initially, the first Friday in February, they call it Go Red for Women is reminding us women because we have a lot of things to do we know the men they get stressed out but we get stressed out too so thank you for wearing red and for the pink thank you two things before black a moment in black history there'll be a meeting immediately following worship for the ministers. Ministers, you meeting immediately following service. Now I want, um, want y'all to help me with something. There's a bunch of good looking men here today and I ain't talking about Steve and the rest of y'all, talking about somebody else. <laughs> I'm talking about some good looking men. In case you haven't noticed, and they're sitting right here in the middle, 
with Mr. Eddie Barlow. Mr. Barlow, won't you and your men please stand if you can? Or when? Now, don't they look good? Give them a round. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. They've been faithful in their coming. And the Bible said they give honor well. Amen. So we thank you, Mr. Barlow. Moment in black history. We want to share some historical facts about the city of Petersburg. Did you know that Peabody High School was the first black public high school established for Negroes in the state of Virginia? That it was originally the colored high school and was established in 1870 in the old First Baptist Church located on Harrison Street and is recognized and on Harrison Street. Major black churches such as First Baptist and Guilfield Baptist formed a moral center of the civil rights movement in Petersburg that gained strength in mid-century and was a major center of action. First Baptist Church is the oldest continually operating black church in the state, the mother of numerous other churches and congregations in the state of Virginia, and is recognized as the oldest black church in North America. The first library sit-in in Petersburg was done March the 7th, 1960, during the McKinney Library sit-in, led by the Reverend Wyatt T. Walker and Reverend R. G. Williams. Reverend Walker was the pastor of Guilford at that time and had become friends with Dr. Martin Luther King. In the early 60s, Dr. King traveled to Central Virginia frequently, staying at the home of Josephine Jones, located at 514 Harrison Street. She provided a safe haven for him because at that time of segregation, no hotels were available to host him, and his whereabouts also needed to be kept secret. Dr. King had close ties with ministers in Petersburg, was the center of the civil rights movement for Virginia. He was so impressed by the local civil rights movement in our city that in 1960, he recruited Reverend Walker to become the executive director for his civil rights organization, the Southern Leadership Conference. He also recruited others who were top staff members from Petersburg, namely his top advisor, the Reverend Dr. Milton Reed, the former pastor of First Baptist Church and a key player of Dr. King's SCLC. And he also recruited Herbert Colton, who was King's Southern Christian Leadership Conference Field Director for Virginia and other states in the South, and who was instrumental in training volunteers in the nonviolent movement. Reverend Reed was quoted as saying, that the national model which was developed for the civil rights movement was taken from the Petersburg model. He also said that though many may not know it, Dr. King visited Petersburg, visit to Petersburg changed the fate of the world. Brothers and sisters, at one time, our city was alive and flourishing. And in spite of the state, the condition of our city today, the circumstances affecting us, there is still hope for Petersburg to flourish again. We've got to believe that all things are possible. It may not happen during my time or your time, but with God, all things are possible. And with a little faith, it can go a long way. I have to believe, brothers and sisters, that it's possible, and I'm keeping hope alive that the movement and still is still on, and one day, church, we shall overcome. Amen. Won't you stand and give God some praise? We shall overcome. Amen. One of these days, we shall overcome. One of these days. It will happen. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. It's offering time, deacon and ushers. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back a portion of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask that this blessing be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and for his sake, we say amen. come to the highlight, to the best part of the service. I'm not saying the choir don't do their thing, and usher and media and all the other folks, but the highlight of, it, of any service is the word of God. Amen? Amen. And we thank you, Lord. Our guest minister today is no stranger. He's been here before. He knows the word. He preaches the word. And he can handle it. Amen. So if you will extend your right hand to the pulpit and repeat after me, Reverend Brett, Reverend Brett preach the word. Preach the word. Reverend, Brett, Reverend Brett, do what, do what God, has God has called you to do. You to do. Preach, the word. preach the word. Bring it on.
trouble in my way. Jesus. 
got to do is try it. He'll get your power each and every hour. All you got to do is call him. All you got to do is call him. Call him in the midnight hour. Call him in the midnight hour. Call him in the midnight hour. My God will give you power. Call him in the cool of the day. Call him in the cool of the day. Call him in the cool of the day. My God will make the way. Call him in the morning. Call him when you bow and pray. I take call him in the morning. Call him when you bow and pray. Let you see a brand new day. I know Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I ought to give God some praise. Come on, you can do better than that if he's been good to you. How many you know God will fix it? it? May not come when you want him, but he'll show up right on time. I wish I had some witnesses that want a shame to tell somebody that I know he'll show up in the nick of time. He may not come when I want him, but he'll show up. When you're sick, he'll show up. When you're down, he'll show up. When you're broke, he'll show up. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Pray with me, if you will. And as we pray, we're going to pray for our sister. We know God is able to do all things. Father, we thank you first of all, for being so good to us, so merciful and so kind. And God, we thank you right now for our sister, and we pray that you would touch her in the name of Jesus. Lord, we don't know, God, and we don't have to know because you're in control of everything. And God, we thank you for those that responded. And so, God, we pray now that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord, be the healer that we know you to be, the deliverer, the way maker, in the name of Jesus. You know, God, as you bless her, bless us. Lord, we need a word from you today. I can't preach until you come, but Lord, I realize that you're already here. Send now, O God, that anointing that makes preaching easy. Turpentine my tongue that I might speak with power, with clarity and conviction. O God, that I didn't come for no fame or fashion, but that the words of my mouth shall be power to the ears of your children. God, I thank you for every opportunity that you allow me to stand, Lord, behind this sacred desk. Stand to proclaim to your people what thus saith the Lord. For God, if ever we needed a word, Lord, we need a word now. Lord, I pray that what you have given me in private, allow me now to share it publicly with thy children. And Lord, that they may not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. For God, we realize that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Send now laborers for the harvest. And, oh God, we pray now, Lord, that you would move, oh God, through this place. Thank you for a third Baptist church. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in the name of Jesus today. And even, God, those that may be listening somewhere. God, touch them right now, God, that their lives, oh God, would be changed, Lord, that their walk would be changed, their talk would be changed to glorify you. And oh God, we bind down that old devil that he would not hinder us from what you have prepared for our hearts to receive and our ears to hear. Lord, bless now thy sick, the shut in, the, the bereaved. Lord, somebody stand in the need of prayer today. Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Somebody give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. We thank God for this opportunity that he has allowed us to share together, to be in this most holy place. Thank God for our worship leader today, Reverend Cherry, to all clergy represented, to Reverend Bullock, whom I saw earlier, to Reverend Carisha, and to all other ministers that assemble, thank you so much. And to Reverend Ford, my friend and brother, and these musicians, give them some love. Amen. God is so good. He's so good and so worthy to be praised. And so we thank him because he's so good. God is an awesome God. I want to apologize. Uh, I got my times mixed up. Amen. But I'm glad to be here. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I just want you to know that I broke every law <laughs> getting here. But the good news is that I'm here. Amen. And the word of God is with me. Good to see my good friend. Amen. Deacon E.S. Jones. Thank God for him. Amen. Give him some love. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Jones, for being with us today. And to all my brothers and sisters, family and friends, we love each and every one. If there is a word from the Lord, I'm not going to hold your patience long. Amen. I know y'all looking at me to see if I can preach, and I'm looking to see if you can pray. I just come to do God's will. First John chapter 4, and two of the officers of this great church through the Diagnet ministry, the deaconess, the missionaries, and the saints, we thank God for your presence. First John chapter 4, beginning at verse 20, and commencing at verse 21, two verses in particular I'm going to look at. I believe this is a good word for us today, especially since we're dealing with Black History Month and Heart Month, and even love. All of us need to be loved by somebody. One psalm writer said, it's so good to be loved when somebody loves you back. And the word of God tells us that we ought to love one another as Christ has loved us. The word of God in 1 John chapter 4, and if it is your custom, you can stand. If not, it's still going to read the same. If someone says, I love God, reading from the New King James Version, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? This commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Let's look at it again. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For who who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. I want you to underline that, highlight it. In your own time, I want you to look at it again when you get a chance. God's word for his people. I want to use for thought or subject for just a moment of your time. When someday comes, when someday comes. And someday comes. My brothers and my sisters, the word someday conjures up all kinds of emotions and thoughts. It, it sparks our imagination of what lies ahead. And we oftentimes, Reverend Ford says, someday I'll be successful. Someday I'll get out of this mess or this rut that I'm in. Someday I'll get the respect that I deserve. Someday, beloved, summons a wish list so long that sometimes we get overwhelmed or carried away. But the word someday also does something else. It provokes our impatience. 
Someday never seems to come quick enough. We get annoyed when we have to wait. And y'all know what I'm talking about. We live in a world where we want things done instantly. We even do God like that. We want our healings instantly. We want our deliverances instantly. We want finances instantly. But we have to remember, my brothers and sisters, Dick and Bullock, that we are on God's time, not our time. Y'all ain't praying with me. I just stopped by to help us today. The word someday also uh, provokes, uh, it seems to come, never come quick enough, but we get annoyed, but our intolerance for a delayed someday sometimes leads to aspiration. We don't need a job someday, we need one now. We don't need equal treatment under the law someday, we need it now. We don't need educational priority someday, we need it now. In other words, we need brotherly love someday, no, we need it now. I wish y'all hear what I'm saying. We're here today in worship and some here, some virtual, wherever they may be, but we claim that we love our brothers and sisters. But when we leave here, we talk so nasty and ugly about one another. Y'all ain't praying with me. Somebody's upset right now. And as soon as you leave here, you really gonna talk. Somebody got mad because I was late this morning and you don't realize you never know what happens, but God works things out Anyway, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. We've got to realize that God is in control of everything. You know, I'm glad that I'm not God. If I was God, a whole lot of folk around would be gone a long time ago. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. You know if you were God, you would say, Zap, what you say about me, Zap? What you do to Zap? That's how I would be. You, what you say about Sister Zap? Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I'm glad that I'm not God. That's why I'm glad that your fate and my fate is not in my fate and not in your hands. Your fate is not in my hands. That's why God is who he is. Now, we've got to first understand something, that all of us in here are imperfect folk saved by a perfect God. That's why we come to church Sunday after Sunday. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Bible said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that you're not no better than I am because let me tell you something, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Don't let the robe fool you. Look good, but, but don't let it fool you. I've done some things that I should not have done and I've been some places I shouldn't have been, but not only me, you too. Yesterday was my birthday, but that doesn't mean that doesn't say I was late for any particular reason. No, I wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't do anything. I just was late because I got my time mixed up. And every now and then, sometimes we get mixed up in what goes on around us and lose focus that God is still in. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. That lets us understand the Bible said we ought to love one another. But we got folk in this world in which we live in, we deal with who we want to deal with. Jesus dealt with everybody. Amen, lights. Jesus dealt with, with everybody. He didn't deal with no particular group. He didn't just deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He dealt with the folk that didn't like him and despised him but he still loved them. Y'all missing what I'm trying to say. We got certain groups of folk we want to deal with. I, I'll deal with Barlow because he, he's pretty good. I, I, I'll deal with, uh, with the digging Reverend Ford because uh, he's all right, but I ain't gonna deal with such, uh, such and such and brothers. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'll deal with Bullock because he's my friend, but I ain't gonna deal with, with, with Joan because uh, I, I don't know him. Y'all got that thing misconstrued. Jesus dealt with the prostitute, the homemonger, the homosexual, everybody, but we don't want to deal with nobody. Jesus dealt with the thugs and the gamblers, the backbiters, but we don't want to deal with nobody. The Bible said that we've got to be all things to all men that by some means we can win some. That's why I got to love everybody. You call me everything you want to call, I'm still going to love the hell out of you because you still say you ain't right either. 
The Bible said, you judge not lest ye be judged. Y'all know we need to hear this because we're living in a day and we've come through COVID and we're still acting crazy and nasty and ugly. And we're still here by God's grace. Whole lot of folk dead and gone, but you're here. God kept you here for a reason. He was trying to straighten us up. That's why I'm glad when I come to church every Sunday. Sometimes I don't feel like it. Matter of fact, when I had surgery, and most of y'all don't know, y'all, some of y'all got mad because I got tennis shoes on. Well, hell, Lord forgive me. Some of y'all need, y'all keep on living. Your feet going to act up too. I can't even try to put a dress shoe on a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, matter of fact, couldn't even put it on. Went to the doctor, the doctor said, he said, Reverend, I know you're a preacher, but there ain't nothing wrong with them shoes. I told you to buy them. And I feel comfortable. I'm just preaching, y'all. That's another sermon for another day. Things happen that we're not in control of. But look at God. That's why, you know, a whole lot of folk look at the outward appearance. God said, I look at the heart. I don't know about you, but if your heart is right, whoo! You know, the other day, the other day I saw two dogs playing with each other. One was a golden retriever, and the other was a black Labrador. They were prancing about, playing with the ball. They didn't care that one was light brown and the other was black. They didn't care that they were all of different breeds. The larger one didn't even use his size to dominate the smaller one. They were just two animals having a good time together. They were animals living together in peace. So, so what is wrong with man that we got to treat folks so nasty because they don't look like you? You keep living, you ain't going to look like you look now. Things that used to stand up ain't going to get up, and things that used to sit up going to fall in. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. We are made in the image of God, not dogs, and yet we do not live on peace and earth. You spell dog backwards, it's spelled God. Keep on messing with something. Since the, the days when God confounded man's language at the Tower of Babel, we have been using weapons to keep away those who differ from us. So what is brotherly love and why is this so elusive? Well, I'm glad y'all asked today. Three things I'm going to share with you and I'll be out of your way. Brotherly love is man's earthly expression of our love for God. See, the apostle John won't allow this lesson to be taught lightly. First John, and John says in First John, John 3 and 10, that man does not belong to God unless he is righteous and loves his brother. Then if you look at First John 3, 17, that, that if you see a brother in need and you do not help, it's proof that God is not in you. Now, I've told people, and I probably told you all, a third Baptist, but we must realize the only time we ought to look down on somebody else is when we're reaching down to pick them up. Our sisters, our brothers. John says in 1 John 4 and 8 that if you do not love, you don't really know God because God is love. But John doesn't stop there. In our specific text today, he spells out brotherly love so plainly that even a child can understand it. John says, if a man says he loves God but hates his brother, he's a liar. Love for God and love for mankind are inseparably connected together. See, John says, if you can't love your brother whom you see, how can you love God whom you've not seen? In other words, if you can't do the easier, how can you do the harder? God commands us, brothers and sisters, to, to love our brothers, our sisters. Our love toward God means nothing if it's not loyal. If we disobey God's command to love one another as I have loved you, we cannot really love God. And you don't believe me? Look at, look at God's word in John 13 and 34. There's only one way to know that someone really loves God, and that is by his love for their fellow man. Yes, yes, not only, I'm talking about someday, but not only do brotherly love as a man's earthly expression of our love for God, but the second thing that we see here in the text, we must admit that brotherly love is a challenge. 
You know, it's not easy being a Christian. You've got some folk that have been in church a long time, and they think they're going to heaven. And you've got some folk that they didn't come right away. They came later on after experiencing what we call life. And they got caught up, but God rescued them. And they're now saved, and they're serving in our churches. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. God can use you. You may have just got saved yesterday, but the one that's been saved all their life must realize that they too used to do some things that they're not particularly happy about. But look at what God has done. He gave us a testimony to look where he brought us from. The saints were always singing a song, look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. You've got to realize that all of us in here got some stuff in our bags. You know, in the country when I was going to school, in elementary school, we didn't have much. We didn't have a whole lot. We didn't have those fancy lunch bags like some of you have today, some of our kids and youth. And then some of y'all that go to these jobs take these nice lunch bags and lunch pails. When Grandma would fix our lunch, she would put it in a brown paper bag. And you would see a lot of people coming to school with brown paper bags. But the one that had Reverend Bullock, the best grease stain, you knew they had a mighty good lunch. Sit down at the lunch table, and the girls and boys would pull out their lunch. And I thought about it just a couple weeks ago when my wife fixed my lunch and it was wrapped up Reverend Bullock in wax paper. Folk don't use that no more. But Reverend Ford, it was wrapped up in wax paper. And I said, wow, this really brought back memories. But Grandma would take, we were lucky if you had a chicken breast, that means that somebody got paid real good. But if not, you just had dark meat, thighs, and legs. Y'all know y'all, y'all ain't always been eating what you eat now. And in particular, the matter of fact, we had the best chicken sandwich. Some of y'all had it too. Chick-fil-A didn't have it. Zaxby's, Raisin Cane's. What is it, Raisin or Raisin? But we had the best one because it was between two pieces of white Wonder Bread. You were blessed if you had sunbeam, a chicken breast, fried the night before, and it was some kind of good. But I'm trying to tell you with that scenario is that we've all got some mess in our bags, our bags of life. You got some grease on your bag. Somebody's grease stain is bigger than the other one because you had some mess, but look what God has done. One day he picked us up, turned us around, cleaned us off. I tell you, loving folk is a challenge. It's so good, good, good. I had a flashback. It's easy to love someone who loves you or who likes you. And maybe you share the same ideas and maybe you share the same goals, maybe you share the same interests, maybe you share the same faith, the same language, the same culture, the same history, the same skin color, and maybe you live in the same neighborhood, but they are the ones who are easier to love, maybe. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. You all ready for the problem? Brotherly love is not a commodity to be dolled out at our pleasure. We don't get to choose who falls within the realm of God's love. God has already made that choice for us. He chose all of mankind as the recipients of his love because he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you and for me. Sins, past, present, and future. That doesn't mean you got to go on sinning, but you just got to think about the fact that if it had not been for the Lord, on your side and my side, we wouldn't be right here. Lord, have mercy. Woo. 
I feel like preaching here. I'm almost finished. And our expression of love among all men is not optional. We must love the unloving and the unlovable because God loves us all. I'm not your pastor, but I'm going to challenge you this week that when you go to work Monday or Tuesday, you love the hell out of them folk that don't talk about you, that look at you ugly, that talk about you and say all manner of things. The Bible said love them anyhow. I know I'm preaching. It may be hard to love the one who despises you, curses you, hates you, rejects you, criticizes you, persecutes you, but that's what we are called to do. Think about what our ancestors had to deal with. But they knew how to call on the name of Jesus. They knew that prayer changes things. And matter of fact, they sung songs that we don't even sing no more because we've gotten all sophisticated. You ought to look where God brought you from. Yes, Reverend Ford, Reverend Bullock, Reverend Cherry, we must love the backslider. Reverend Carisha, we must love the backslider because when we slipped, God still loved us. We must love the adulterer because when we stumbled, God loved us. We must love the swindler because when we haven't all been honest ourselves, God still loved us. We must love the, the Carlton because uh, uh, we haven't all been authentic ourselves and God still loves. We may hate sin, but we must love the sinner because God loves us. Yes, God gave us the greatest expression of brotherly love and action when he gave us a Savior. Christ is our perfect example of brotherly love, a, a, a love that looked beyond our faults and saw our needs, a love that be looked beyond our shame and forgave our sins. Christ covered our wickedness with his righteousness. He covered our deceit with his truth. He covered our foolishness with his wisdom. He covered our rebellion with his submission to death on the cross for our sins. I'm talking about when someday comes. If we are worthy of the love of God's only begotten son, then two, we are all worthy men. Yes. But what happens when we refuse to extend brotherly love to everyone? Well, I've already held y'all too long. The first thing I said was brotherly love is man's earthly expression of our love for God. And the second point, we looked at was what we must admit that brotherly love is a challenge, but, but thirdly, my brothers and my sisters, brace yourself. The lack of brotherly love leads to condemnation. Mankind will suffer a terrible fate for our hatred toward each other. But don't think of, the vague, of it in vague generalities. Let's get specific. Now, According to John's epistle, national leaders will initiate unprovoked wars against their neighboring nations, will suffer condemnation, because if they can't love their neighbor, they really never loved God in the first place. According to John's epistle, judges who pass judgments with an uneven hand will suffer condemnation, because if they can't treat everyone the same, they never really loved God in the first place. According to John's epistle, bank executives who grant loans in favor of one race over, over another will suffer condemnation because they never really loved God in the first place. And according to John's epistle, neighbors who refuse to be civil toward each other will suffer condemnation because they never really loved God in the first place. Notice here, my brothers and my sisters, that when you look at this particular text and this passage, John makes it very clear. If you don't extend brotherly love to everyone, if you can't bring yourself to love your enemies, if you can't accept that God loves all sinners, you can't bring yourself to obey God's command to love him and to love your neighbor as yourself. Then you never really love God at all. You were going through the motions, coming to church because you were drugged. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying? 
After all these years, when you were a child and you came, some of us came because Boo Boo and Bebe and June Bug and all of them got baptized at the same time once a year in the country. That's what they did. But we did it because we wanted to be all together. But then as we got older, we understood it's more than just joining the church, giving your preacher the, uh, the preacher your hand and the being baptized. It's all about serving the Lord because serving him will pay off after a while. For those of you who claim you harbor no hatred toward anyone, but sometimes you find yourself hated by your fellow man, John's condemnation may seem like justice, but don't let the thought of your enemy's condemnation cause you to gloat and be joyful, or you will end up sharing in your enemy's condemnation. Hatred is a two-edged sword. You'll be indicated and indicted right along with the others. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But I stopped by to tell you today, that your sole duty is to rescue those who despise you. Those who are in desperate need. Christianity attacks evil at its root. And Brother Mike, the supreme work of every Christian is to offer yourself to help your fellow man or your sister. One to one and uh, to bring to bear the love of Christ upon his heart and conscience. We ought to do like Grandma did when she encouraged us to get our education. We ought to do like Granddaddy when he didn't have but a middle school education, didn't graduate from high school, and some of them didn't know how to count their money and some didn't know how to read, but they had a faith in God. And they threw out the lifeline. We ought to throw out the lifeline today and rescue them by sharing our love of Christ with them and put their needs above our own. If you lead by example, the love of God will draw men to his throne. Someday, men will have to face judgment for his hatred toward his fellow man. When someday comes, and that is that the role is called, don't let your name be among them. There is but one cure for all the ills of our human race, and that is the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ alone can fill the miserable with joy. Christ alone uh, can welcome the prodigal home. Christ alone uh, can give you the lifeless life. Lord have mercy, I said Christ alone uh, can sweeten a hateful heart. Christ alone uh, can turn your victims into victors. Christ said, uh, if I, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And someday, uh, I want to tell y'all, Third Baptist Church uh, at 550 Farmer Street, uh, Petersburg, Virginia, 23803, that someday uh, Christ is coming back for those who really love the Lord. And I wonder today, is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Uh, I heard, uh, I said, I heard, uh, I heard the thunder roll, uh, and I've seen the lightning flashing, uh, and I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Uh, but I heard, uh, I said, I heard uh, the voice of Jesus saying, Still the fight on, uh, cause they never leave me alone. Uh, still the love them uh, when they don't love you. Uh, still the pray for them uh, when they don't pray for you. Uh, and I'm going on and believing, uh, and believing even in what he said, uh, but is there anybody here that loved my Lord? Uh, is there anybody here that said, I'm going to serve him uh, if I got to serve him by myself? Uh, is there anybody here that know he's a lily in the valley? Do you know him today? Uh, do you love him? I said, do you love him? If you love him, you ought to lift up your hand. If you love him, you ought to open up your mouth. If you love him, you ought to serve him because serving the Lord will pay off after a while. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that one day, one day, 
the Lord looked down at the world uh, and he saw it in a bad condition uh, and he said son I'm going to send you uh, to die for the sins of the world uh, he said daddy I don't want to do it uh, but if it's your will uh, let your will be done uh, he sent him down uh, to be born in a manger he was born in Bethlehem uh, Lord have mercy he lived uh, and he walked among us uh, he preached to him in the temple uh, and they didn't understand uh, because he was anointed by God uh, and then I tell you uh, that one day uh, can I hurry along here one day uh, he went to Calvary's cross uh, and he hung uh, on the cross uh, they nailed him in his hands uh, and they nailed him in his feet uh, for you and for me uh, he died uh, oh didn't he die he died uh, he died uh, yes he died uh, he died for you uh, and he died for me uh, he died uh, till the sun wouldn't shine uh, he died uh, till the cloud got dark uh, he died uh, till the earth began to shake uh, and I heard uh, I said I heard uh, one of the soldiers say uh, that this must be uh, the son of God uh, he died uh, and he put him in a borrowed tomb uh, but he didn't stay there he got up uh, with all Oh, power, power to make you love your enemies. Power to make you lift up your hand. Power to make you shout every now and then. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah! Say yeah! Yeah! He died. Do you love him? Say yeah! Say yeah! Someday, it's going to be all right after a while. Just keep on serving him. Keep on loving on folk. And God will make everything all right. Can I tell you today, doesn't matter where you come from, God loves you. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life, God loves you. And don't think you're by yourself. God is right there with you. He walks with you. He talks with you. Some folks say, I don't know he's there, but let me tell you something. He said, if you descend to the uttermost parts of the world, if you make your bed in hell, he said, I'll be there with you. And can I tell y'all something? For those of you that are going through mental issues, don't take your life. God gave it to you for a reason. When he gets ready for you, he's going to call you home. So what, we all got troubles and struggles and sicknesses and illnesses, but the thing is that we're here for a reason, to see the glory of God manifest in our lives. I'm finished, I'm finished. I just want to help you today. Someday, it's going to be all right. Someday, someday, I am going where Jesus is Someday Someday Oh, I'm going where Jesus is Oh, someday Someday Well, I'm going where Jesus is Someday Someday Yes, I'm going where Jesus is. That's good news right there. That's good news. Standing on your feet all over the building. The doors of the church are open. There may be one today. There may be one today that doesn't know who Jesus is. Why don't you come? Can I tell y'all something? 
Third Baptist isn't a perfect church. Where I come from isn't a perfect church. No church is a perfect church. But I believe that you're in the right place today where God can move upon your life if you get to know who he is. To my left, to my right, to the center. If you don't know today, why don't you step out on faith? We'll pray with you. We'll talk with you. It's the only thing you got to do is just get to know who Jesus is. Don't wait too late. You can come by letter, by baptism, by Christian experience. Why don't you come today? Don't leave here not knowing where you're going to spend eternity. There may be one. Someday, someday, I am going. Oh, someday, someday, I'm going. Oh, someday, someday, I'm going. Someday, someday, I'm going, Jesus is. Someday, someday, I'm going where Jesus is. I pray today that you've been blessed by his word today. And I pray that you have felt God's spirit. And I just want to, as we prepare to go down from this place, to pray that God's blessings would be upon your life. And I'm serious about that. Make it a choice today to love like never before. Time is winding up. And I want all of us to see Jesus. I want all of us to see Jesus. Pray with me, if you will. If anybody's in need of any special prayer today, you can make your way to the altar, and we'll pray God's blessings upon you. But if not, you can stand right where you are, for we know God hears and answers our prayer. Yes, yes. How many of you believe that God is a healer? I believe it. I, I know, I know. So I want you to have that faith today that whatever you stand in the need of, God will do it for you. Make your way to the altar. The altar is open. Can I tell y'all something? Y'all may not know it, but there's a sweet spirit in this place. Oh, I feel God's presence. I feel God's presence. Yes. We worship and adore you. about and before you give you the glory your name I want to say to you all that have pressed your way to this altar today that you came with great faith yeah, bring it on in bring it on in Diggin Bullock I want you to put your hand on my shoulder your hand on my shoulder you too Diggin Smith and those of you that may feel one way about coming, don't, don't feel no way. We've all felt that way. But let me tell you that the same God that can move at the altar can stop by your pew. And I'll tell you this, never leave before the prayer or the benediction because you might miss your healing and your anointing. I don't know what you stand in the need of today, but let me tell you something, that God is here. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Pray with me if you will, and then we're going home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come first to say thank you. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the movement of your spirit. God, I pray right now for all of us, not just at the altar, but even at the pew, those virtually, that you would move upon their lives. That man, that woman, that boy, that girl. Lord, some come for healing, some come for deliverance, some come for finances. Lord, in the name of Jesus, hear their prayer today. Lord, bless that hand that we're holding. Right now, God, we bind every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus that will not hinder them from their healing, their deliverance, from the finance, the breakthrough that they stand in the need of. God, have your way. Lord, bless it when we leave here, the same anointing that was at this church today. We can take it to our homes, on our jobs. Lord, that lives will be changed, Lord. That your presence would saturate our houses and everywhere we step, God. The ground shall be blessed. God, every prayer request, will you hear it today, Lord, please? And even for every unspoken prayer request, move right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit someday. Lord, we know it's going to get better. Lord, we pray right now that you be with us, Lord, throughout this week. And even as we leave this place, bless us in our going and our coming. Bless our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, Lord, our extended family. Bless Third Baptist in the name of Jesus. God, we claim, though, God, that your Holy Spirit would run rampant from pew to pew and aisle to aisle in Jesus' name. And, oh, God, we pray that even move through the choir on the musicians, every aspect of this church, all of this campus in the name of Jesus. God, hear our prayer now. And now unto our God that is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless for the presence of the glory of the exceeding joy. Only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. And may the sunshine of God's love kiss your cheeks and wrap his loving arms protection around you and be with you in the midnight hour. This is our prayer. If you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hey, Joe, we're going to go home like this. Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion? Certainly, 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 Lord. Do you love everybody? Do you love everybody? Do you love everybody? Certainly, certainly. Hug somebody, tell them you love. Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion? Have you got good religion? Certainly, certainly, sir. Is your name on the roll? Is your name on the roll? Is your name on the roll? 